Hello, everybody. Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. We're just going to wait a minute to let everyone come in before we start. But until then, I'm Andrew. I'm Dennis. We're known as the Crafty Lumberjacks. We craft from our apartment here in Astoria, Queens, New York. We want to hear from you in a comment where you're watching from. Yeah. Um, and special shout out to Michaels and Fiskars for letting us craft and meet with our crafty nerds here to create something. It's a rainy day here, so we're super happy to be inside and making with you all. Yes. If you can hear that, that's our Christmas clock. We do have a Christmas clock up all year round. So every hour, there's a little Christmas tune that happens. It's just, you know, we love crafting. We love Halloween. We love Christmas. And we really love summer too, which we're really excited about this project because it does have a very summery uh, boho vibe. And like Dennis said, it is raining today. So we are trying to bring that sunshine yes, in. Yes, we're waiting for those summer vibes. <laughs> yes. Today, we're going to be showing you how to create your own DIY light box um, right, with the nice. boho summer vibe, like Andrew said. You know, you can find these at the craft store, but they're a little pricey. And yes. also, they're not customized towards your liking. This way, we're gonna build the box from scratch the way we want it to match our aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about this. We really could uh, replicate this exact one. We have all the measurements in a blog post, and I know uh, we will be sharing the link in the chat, but you could really just take our idea and really make it your own. Yes. All right. All right, should we get started? This is also our craft assistant here, <laughs> Teddy Kruger. Um, we'll have to see if he gets off the table or if he joins in. Yes, I actually just got a ton of treats, so we might be like throwing them through the class. If you <laughs> yes. have a fur baby at home, you probably know what we're going through. You know the struggle. Anytime you put out any craft materials, they love to just sit on them, you know, especially the stuff that gets hair, you know. Yes, like, always, that like, collects the all the fur, like, oh all the gosh. hair. All right, so we're going to start. We're going to start by building our box. For our box, we're going to be using mat board. Mat board is basically what people use to frame their pictures. Yep. You can find this in the framing section at Michael's. Um, it's a little thicker material, which is great because it will be sturdy for our light box. Yeah. Um, uh, but before we cut it down, I'm actually going to cut it with uh, my scissors here. These are the ample scissors uh, from Fiskars. Yeah, the They're amplify scissors. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yes, they're great for thicker materials. I'm just going to cut down the mat board um, down to size. This way I can trim it down for our four sides for to build our box. Yeah, and the great thing about these is, like Dennis said, you can really cut things down. So I always like to have these on hand to uh, cut things like uh, boxes, you know, when you just get like all that packaging yes, and stuff yes. like that. They're really heavy duty, so that helps. And just cutting down, because the mat board is so big, just cutting it down will really help us get it into our precision cutter which is where we're going to be doing all our cutting today. Yes. Now we went with classic black and white. You want the white on the inside of the box because that's going to be the most reflective and give you the most light. Uh, yes. But you know, Michaels has a whole bunch of different colors to choose from, uh, but we want to keep it simple and um, classic. Yes, and I think that's a good tip that Dennis just said. You really do want a light material in your light box inside because it will really reflect the light the best. So even if you have a really bright bulb in there, if your walls are white or something bright, it's just going to make that light just shine so much brighter and get that image. I like um, this. He's a poet. Am I right? Yes, he, yes he's I didn't rhyming. Even know. I didn't yes. even know it. Um, but yeah, you do want a really a nice light material. Sorry, that's not an earthquake. That's just our assistant climbing up on the computer because, you know, hey, yes. as cats do. All right, so now I cut the mat board into two pieces. Great. And now we're going to trim it down to match the sides of our box there yeah. um, with our precision. Uh, pro I can't speak Dennis today. Can't I'm having one of those days. I'm very much affected by the weather. And today it's all gloomy and rainy, and I'm just having one of those struggle days. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is our precision cutter. And the great thing about this, we live in a, a one bedroom apartment in Astoria, Queens. So it's, it's just right across the river from New York. What we love about this too is that it folds, so it, it's really big, but it stores really well. Yes, and actually, same yeah. thing with our cutting mat here. Totally. It folds up. Uh, we don't have a lot of space. We live in a one bedroom apartment yeah. here. So anytime we can uh, you know, hide our craft supplies, the Absolutely. better. Okay, All right, so, so if we want to switch to the top down camera, maybe, um, I'm just going to start cutting down the box here. We are um, starting with the back side, which is a nine by nine. Again, this precision uh, trimmer is good for thicker materials. So this is the mat board, and we're going to cut that down. 
and we're gonna start. And I also love all these products, the Fiskars products come with a grid, which is super helpful when you're measuring things out and you want things to be as perfect as possible. Um, so we're going to start cutting this down and see. Yeah, it's totally. And uh, you know, it's it's one of those things you want to measure twice, cut once. Yes. Or if you have um, someone like me, let them do the work because I never do any of like the you know the cutting. I always I'm just like Dennis, you just take. I know he makes you know? me do it all. But uh, but the great thing about this cutter it really does make it easy. Even if you're not like great with numbers or or stuff like that, it really does. Um, it really does make it as easy as possible for you. Yes. All right, so I'm starting with the back side here. It's going to be nine by nine. So you just line it up there at the nine and give it a trim. You know, and as I, I love this craft because it is like a throwback craft. You don't need a lot of materials to make this. Um, and it's really something that you're working with your hands from start to end. Totally. You know, I feel like that kind of has gone out of style a little bit where we're using gadgets and gizmos to play, <laughs> you know? Well, I think it went out of style and now it's like back because now people really do want to yes, be like especially this with... past year. Right, you so know? we have our back cut. Yes, yeah, so this is a nine by nine piece. And now I'm gonna create my sides here. Uh, we're gonna do a five by five by 11. Yeah, five and a half by 11. Um, and you know, if you don't have, if you don't wanna use a mat board, you could totally use other materials. You could use, um, cardboard, you could use, you could even take a box and use the box, repurpose the box as the light box and not even build the whole thing. We've done that with uh, cereal boxes before. It worked really well. Um, what, what other stuff? Uh, cardboard. Use? Yeah, cardboard. Uh, even like a thick card stock you could mm -hmm. use if you know, if you're not going to handle it too much and you want it more temporary, that would totally be fine. Yes. What he said, I wasn't listening. Well, that's okay. You know, you're, you're kind of cutting over here. So, um, but if you have questions during uh, the class, like, please feel free to ask in the chat. Um, and you know, we would love to answer it. Also, like, let us know where you're coming from. As we said, we're from Astoria, Queens, New York, uh, but we know we have uh, Wisconsin. We know we have Texas in the house. So we know yes. we're all over the place, which is just great. And actually, if you don't know too much about us, we um, actually met, we used to be actors before we were professional crafters. So we yep. toured around the country and Canada for two years doing Fiddler on the Roof. That's right. And uh, you know, we, we've been to a lot of your, your states and your towns. Um, maybe you even saw us maybe. on the road. Yeah, that's so true. Singing matchmaker, matchmaker. So I have our backside here cut and our two sides cut. And now I'm gonna to start to cut the tops and the bottoms. Uh, we need two of them. It's going to be five and a half by nine. Great. And I'm still using, the best thing about this project is you only need one mat board to create your light box. Totally, and you have a lot of it left over. Yes. So you could frame, you can make another light box. You really could do a lot with it. Yes. Um, but yes, like Dennis said, we were on the National Tour of Fiddler on the Roof and we actually found a love of crafting together. We used to make crafts for the cast and the crew. Uh -huh. And that is where we got our start. And then we created a blog because of a lot of our cast members, they wanted us to, um, they wanted to like follow along. And this was kind of before Instagram really took off. So they were like, oh, do a craft blog. And we did. And now we're lucky enough to do this full time. We do content for HGTV. We also do a lot of uh, live segments. Um, like we've been on live with Kelly and Ryan. Um, the Chew, the Chew uh, Rachel Ray, Good Morning, Good Morning America, America, the Drew Barrymore show. So we have a lot of fun crafting. Right. We're really lucky. Uh, you have five, 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 or five I and a half by nine. So again, I'm just lining everything up. Uh, the, the, the cutting uh, precision cutter is doing all the work here. I'm just lining it up to the measurement here, five by five by nine, you know, and then just cutting it down. Yeah, and something else I love about this is because if you use a paper cutter before, you know, a lot of times your blade starts to get dull, but the precision cutter, actually the blade really never gets dull. So it's really great. You can just keep cutting away and with thick materials like this, it's perfect. Yes. All right, so do you have all your pieces cut? I think, I think that's it. For the frame, right. I'm gonna use, uh, I already had these pre-cut, yes. just because they're a little smaller. Yeah, we don't wanna bore you with cutting. There's more yes. to this than just- So cutting. for that, you can use the amplify scissors or whatever you have at home, even a craft blade, craft knife, yeah. ruler. Um, 
you know, and again, what I like about this project is that it can be catered to your own space. You can make it any size you want. We um, left this a little thicker because um, we're actually going to be doing a layering effect in our light box. And we'll talk about that a little later. Yes. So I'll, show, I'll just like show it one more time so you can kind of understand. Here it is. So we're going to start building this together. Oh, I'm really excited about this part. All right, so we have all our pieces cut here, and now you do need a glue gun. Of course, you can find tons of glue guns at Michael's. Of course. We, we go to Michael's. We actually walk a mile to get to our Michael's, and we know our entire staff there. Yes, it's They really see us great. coming, and they say, oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. No, but I mean, living in New York and being close to a Michael's is like covenant. A blessing. You know, so the walk to Michael's is really easy, and our, our, our staff there is just so great. Yes, and now if you ever make any of these projects, you know, be sure to tag us, Crafty Lumberjacks, or tag Fiskars or Michaels. The hashtag is Make It With Michaels. Yep. We'd love to see your projects, uh, or if you ever want to share uh, a project with us, we we always love totally. to see what you're creating. Or if you have a question about the project, just like let us know through Instagram or yes. email or whatever. The, this we will video get back will to. also be saved on YouTube. Yep. Um, and will also be on our blog and Fiskar's blog. So you can always find uh, that information Absolutely. after the fact. So we have our nine by nine piece uh, here on the bottom. We're just gonna start constructing our box. Yes. So our inspiration for this, we have a vintage TV that we um, change out for every holiday, every season. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. So we gutted it out and then we uh, we kind of use it as a diorama, almost yes. like a light box. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's the inspiration of this. So we did want our, our light box to have these legs yeah, and, so it, yeah, yeah, so our inspiration is kind of like a little vintage TV. So we're going to start to glue our sides together. So we have our nine by nine piece, and I have the longer piece on the outside here. This is the five and a half by 11, yes. and we're just going to use a glue gun to glue it on. Yes. Now, the precision cutter will cut these really precise, but when you're making anything handmade, don't worry if it's not 100% perfect because gluing something together like this, it will never be 100, 100% perfect, but you can get really close. Now, what you wanna do is just line up uh, the edges together, just like Dennis did, and you just wanna make sure that you're pressing these edges together as well as you can. Now, if you don't have four hands on deck, that is okay. You could always use a book to push behind there. Yes, yeah, or set it up against a box or totally. anything like that. But you do wanna be careful not to get glue to um, kind of seep into the sides. So yeah, because we want it to be, uh, you know, the cleanest as possible. Totally. So um, we're working on the inside here. We're putting all our uh, white sides on the inside of the box. Yes, again, that's just so it reflects really well. There we go. And Dennis, are you pushing those sides on? I'm pushing that. I'm pushing. All right. And like Andrew said, if you don't have four hands, you can use, uh, prop this up against a wall, a book, a box, totally. or, you know, one of your animals can help. That probably won't work too well, Dennis, but that's a good thought. Yes. <laughs> and the great thing about working with a glue gun, too, is that it, it does dry quickly. So you do have a moment if you need to shift, time, yeah. but also you don't need to hold it up forever. <laughs> you know. All right. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to let that dry. Great. And before we glue our other side, I think it's best to do the bottom next, just so that it can help support it. Yes, yeah, so you have what a little right angle yeah. there. So how about I slide this in? Go for it. And I'm just gonna push it. And this time I'm really trying to secure uh, the bottom and the other side. Uh, I'm sorry, the bottom and the side to the side that we already glued. Yeah, yeah, that made sense. Okay. <laughs> Oop. There we go. So again, you just wanna push the piece in and- You might need another. Yeah, I was going to say, like, glue. anytime you're crafting on camera, you always oh have to gosh. do the glue gun. Yes, you have to put the a glue, glue stick, stick, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It never, it never works out. We came prepared, though, so we sure we got this. <laughs> Let me just make sure it's all lined up. And, you know, you don't even need to use a glue gun. I guess now that I'm thinking about it, you can probably use some type of tape, like a masking oh, yeah. tape or, um, you know, even duct tape. Totally. Just to kind of uh, hold it in place and hold it all together. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Looks pretty good. All right, now I'm just gonna- You can see it's this. already standing up on its own there. Yes. And 
And I do think it helps if you're really quiet while you're doing it. <laughs> yes, do you ever yes. feel that way? You have like, to concentrate. I just need to concentrate. Yes, yes exactly. We, we keep playing to the front camera here, but we keep forgetting there's a top camera. <laughs> I, know. I know, you should see our, our faces are very yes. expressive right now. It's really great. And you just want to hold it like Dennis is doing until you can feel that it is secure. Yes. Again, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, yes. We have some helpers watching uh, that can help us out with Absolutely. your questions. And I was going to say, now with the map board, you can kind of see it is a little bit warped. So if that happens to you, a good tip is to just lay a book on it before you do this. We're not having too many issues, but if it does feel like it's it's Little. not laying straight, I think that's a great tip. Yes, all right. All right. So, so now we're gonna build our other side here. So as here. you can see, just so you can really see it, we have one side, this is gonna be, this is the bottom here. That makes a little more sense like this. This is the bottom and here, we're just gonna do this next side. So it really is coming together nice and quickly. Yes, I'm surprised. Usually we have a, you know, anytime we do anything on camera, it's a, a craft disaster. You know, so I the mean, crafting gods are with us today. Thank you, please don't <laughs> jinx it. I know, I spoke too soon, right? <laughs> All right, now we're gonna glue on our other side here. And you see, it's uh, we're really not taking a lot of time to make this. Totally. This is a great activity if you want to do with the kids or your whole family. Actually, uh, the kids part would be good for um, building the, the screen. The screen, yes. Or I think it's a great tip, kind of like we said, you could use a cereal box instead and just cut out the front if you are working with kids and this seems maybe like it's a little too difficult. Yes, you want to keep it easy for yourself, you know? Absolutely. And I think what's been so great about this past year is that people have gotten really creative, yes. uh, you know, using things that they already have in their homes to make something from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially that's what we're doing today with just a few materials. Here All right, now go. I'm just going to glue the side to the bottom piece. Great, great. And again, what's so great about this is that uh, you can customize it to your own liking. And we're gonna actually show you how to uh, swap it out. So you don't have to make a permanent light box. You can make one that you can change uh, throughout the season, throughout the year, uh, for different holidays. If you have uh, a, a small gathering or a party, you can even uh, put lettering on this and say, this is my you know, famous, Food dish. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, yes, that like, famous food dish. That famous food I dish. I just love that famous food dish you make, Dennis. Thank you. Um, no, but yes, of course, I think that's the mo that's the fun part about a light box is that you can really um, change things up. It's like a marquee, you know? Yes. All right, how's that going? I think it's going pretty well. I think we, we have our first box, uh, our, our uh, yes. what would you call this, our framework? I think, yeah, our I was framework. Say, yeah, our framework. Yeah, looks pretty good. All right, should we see, let's see, does it stand well? Oh, it does stand well. Okay, that's great. I think checking it as you can, I think always helps out. Just check as you go. All right, now we're gonna glue on the frame to the top. Yes, and, or, which is yeah. like the TV screen. Yes, okay. Okay, now Andrew, Andrew's gonna take over here. I, I <laughs> haven't been working already. So I like to start and now I don't know if we gave the measurements of these. So again, you want to do it towards uh, you know whatever light box size you're making. Yep. But this is just matches the the front and the sides. We did one by nine. Yeah. So these are just one by nine pieces. So I'm going to start with the, uh, two parallel pieces, just the top yeah, and the bottom. Be one set fit better. I think this is pretty great. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And now let's see. So I'm just going to add a little bit. I'm going to come right up to the as edge. As you teach, I'm going to come and look to see if there's any comments or questions. Great. So I'm just gluing it right to the edge. I'm just using a little glue, a little dab will do you just fine. You don't need to be too crazy about it. And then I'm going to place it on. What I'm trying to do is just line it up the best I can since this is the front. Here we go. We have uh, someone in from Canada, Toronto. That is oh, on my bucket list. I've never right. been. Florida, Colorado Springs, one of our favorite places. Florida, Massachusetts, Minnesota. Map board. You can find all of these materials at Michael's. The map yes. board is um, in the framing section, uh, usually on the back wall there. They have its um, like just a display with a whole bunch of different pieces of map board. Missouri. Dimensions of the pieces, yes. Uh, you know, we will have everything in a blog post. Yeah, it's already up on our 
for that site. So happylumberjacks.com, or I know they will be posting the, um, the link in the chat, so not to worry. All right, so now I'm just doing the top. And I'm really, when I'm doing the top, I'm really just focusing on making sure that it's nice and lined up right here. And that seems pretty good. Oops. Oh, there you go. Sorry, I, I left you hanging. No, You're that's right. okay. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Well, so someone now. I gave a shout out to the precision cutter. And oh, he said, yes. what? It folds? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this fits stuff. right in on our bookshelf. Look, it folds right in half. Yep, it actually is really cute too. Like if you have like a cute craft room, this would look really cute like displayed out on your shelf. All right, so now I'm just gonna do the sides and I'm just going to line up the sides and just add a little bit of glue. And Holly just actually shared the link for the blog post there. So if you need the measurements or the materials, right. um, you can click on that. Uh, but I hope you stay with us till the end. We're getting there, we're getting there. All right. This is now, I'm having flashbacks to watching WandaVision. Why? Well, just because of, you know, the TV. It's kind oh, of like a right. retro kind of vintage feel. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. So then I'm just going to add here. I did get a little gluey on my fingers when you when you left me. I'm, I'm sorry. gluey on my fingers. I'm sorry. All right. But there it is. Really cute. So cute. I have some, you know, some flyaways. You ever get those? Yes. Glue gun. Good for Halloween, woo, woo, woo. not good for every day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely good for Halloween, not good for every day. All right. Now for the top, we're actually not going to glue it on. It will just sit right on top. And the reason we're not gluing it on is because we want to have access to it. Um, so we can swap out things inside and all of that. But here it is. I mean, yeah, I think really it looks cute. really, really cute. great. And what I like about this map board too, it gives you these nice um, details right here. You can see it's just like a nice crisp white line. I think it feels very fresh, very modern. And again, do you see how bright it is inside the box? That's really, <coughs> excuse okay, me. You're right. Yeah, that's really important because we really do want it to shine uh, very nice and brightly. Yes. All right, so are we ready to work on? Yes, we're ready to add our, our screen. All right. I'm really excited about this. So let me show you what it looks like. Here, I'm gonna leave the box right here. All right. And so this is what's inside. Now it is um, two pieces of vellum paper and I just sandwiched them with a little bit of space to add some dimension. Now you can do it however you want. Here it is. There we go. Um, but what I really like about this is when you see it, there's um, the paper or the vellum in the back. It's just like a little bit fuzzy. So it really just adds like a little ump and it's so easy to do. Yes. Now, if you don't know what vellum paper is, it's actually plastic. Now, uh, you if you were, if you were uh, like raised in the 80s, like we were, you probably know vellum paper as- Shrinky dinks. Yes. Yes, and Michaels offers a whole wide variety of different shrinky dink paper. They have clear, they have rough and ready, they have white. Yes. Um, we're we using the clear and the rough and ready. Totally. So here is the clear. Now you're not gonna be able to really see the clear, but it's, um, it's clear. And here is the rough and ready. Now, if you cannot find rough and ready and you can only find clear, a great tip is you can actually take sandpaper and just sand down the clear vellum paper and that will actually give you this slightly opaque uh, look. Yes, or you can even use uh, your takeout containers. Totally. Like, I don't know if a lot of people do that, but they uh, still do that, those plastic containers. Yes, you can like actually salad use that. containers, yeah, totally. And this is just um, the, the bright white vellum paper as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut it down um, to size just so it fits in the box perfectly. And I'm gonna be using the Amplify scissors for that. Just because this is a bit of a thicker material, I think it does really help. So I'm just gonna cut it across. I'm not worried and about- you're cutting this to the nine by nine size, correct? Correct, I'm cutting it a little yeah. bigger. So they, they come in like size, it's like a computer paper size, like eight by 10 yeah, actually, or so eight by 12. Yes, so this is a, nine by eight. I just trimmed down about an inch from the top. Just fit in the frame. Yeah, right? just to fit in the yes. frame here. All right, because we have the one inch border. Correct. Mm -hmm. So then I'm just going to... But, you know, we're, we're good at crafting. We're not good at math. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, you know, with numbers, we get a little confused sometimes. Crafting, not mathing. Yes. You know? 
All right, so the clear vellum paper is going to be the first layer. And now what I'm going to do is, here's a hack we love to do for so many projects. I went on online, I found a free image and I printed it out. Now, linear art is so in right now. Yes. So I thought that would be perfect because it's simple to do and it's just so trendy. So I found these um, palm leaves. Oh my gosh, what is the name of them? Like I Mana was, uh, like mana something. I know, I always wanna say like monastery, but it's not. But so it's these, uh, these palm leaves. I'm sure if you know, you can leave it in the chat. But um, I found that and I'm actually just gonna put the vellum paper right over it. So I'm gonna line it up the way I want it. Let's see. Yeah, and again, like if you don't want to do the summer uh, palm leaves here, uh -huh. you can um, do do anything. You can even do a beach scene or palm trees. Totally. Uh, you know, again, use what you like and make what you like. Absolutely. <laughs> so I line, I just have it lined up here, and I'm going to be using uh, just a sharpie marker. You just want to use something that is uh, permanent, just so it doesn't wash away, or just so it sticks to the vellum. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to trace it. And again, we went with the classic uh, black and white here, and then we're going to add yep. um, actually tissue paper. I don't know if you you said that yet. I didn't. But for please. for our pops of color, um, but you know, again, you can use any color marker for this. Get creative. Again, this is the part that I think you can get the kids involved. Have totally. them draw. Have them trace. Have them create their own image. You can even give them a uh, a theme. You know, say like make a beach uh, design. Make a um, yeah. What other? What, what do other people do during the summer? Uh, park. I, yeah, the park. I always felt like when I was growing up, I always wanted something really special in my room. Uh -huh. So I feel like this is a great uh, craft to do with the kids because you can really have it customized for what they want in their own room. It's a little hard to see since it is see through. So I'm just going to show you there. That is so that looks professionally art. printed. Well, thank you. You're I mean, I, I traced welcome. it quickly <laughs> and it came out pretty well. I mean, that's another great thing about linear <laughs> art. Maybe we should have the, the box here. All right, you can put the box there. There you go. All right, so I have my first layer. I'm actually just going to move this aside and now I'm gonna be working on the second layer, the pops of color. Dennis already said, we're just gonna be using some tissue paper and I am gonna be using these total control scissors. These are also from Fiskars. I love these so much. Uh, something I really also like about Fiskar scissors is you know if they have um, the, the the actual what do you, the blades are black, then they are um, they're like sticky resistant. So if you're working with a sticky material, it's not going to uh, stick to your scissors and cause that residue to make it you know kind of wear out over time. Yes. So I'm just going to be cutting some blobs. That's another trend right now. I feel like it's like blobs, line art yes. and just like these very um, organic, uh, simple, blobby shapes. type yes. shapes. Um, so I'm just going to be using um, what I like to do when I cut out um, anything from a bigger material, just like you did with the map board, is just kind of give a pre cut. Okay, you know, yes, yeah, just kind of get a piece out off and then. Totally, because it's, it's a little harder to work with a big piece of tissue paper. So I'm actually just going to pre-cut all my little pieces. Yes. And the fun thing about these scissors is it's not a traditional, um, it's not a traditional handle. So you can see I'm kind of just pressing, which makes it really fun and it really helps with the detail work. Yes, we use a, a lot of those a lot for the holidays. Oh yeah. For like our Christmas cards, any of our like Christmas ornaments or Christmas um, decorations. Definitely. Andrew will yell, "Where are oh, these scissors?" I know. <laughs> I, I'm a little bit of a, a scissor purist because I know scissors are meant for specific things. So I'll see Dennis reaching for a pair of fabric scissors to use on paper. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh, no I'm no, no, good no. with the fabric scissors. Okay, well, I was just getting okay. an example. My mother, she's a quilter. Um, <laughs> so she was very particular about her, her um, fabric scissors when I was growing up. All right, all right. But you do reach for the wrong scissors. I'm just letting oh. everyone know that right now. How dare you. All right, so now I'm just gonna uh, cut out a blob. And what I really, um, I love to cut out paper. Dennis knows that's like one of my favorite things. I went to school to be a teacher and I used to teach and it's just, it's one of those things that go hand in hand. A good tip when you are cutting um, something with round edges is don't actually move the scissors themselves, uh, move the paper instead. So I like to keep my scissors um, grounded and then I like to just shift with the paper and that's gonna help me get these or uh, really nice, smooth, organic um, edges, and they're not going to feel a little jaggedy. They're going to just uh, go a little, they're going to be more flowy, I guess I'm going to yes. say. 
And now uh, we're using tissue paper for this. If you don't have tissue paper, you could of course use a uh, cardstock or construction paper. But what we, yeah. we really like about the tissue paper is that it is transparent. Uh -huh. So you can see through it and it gives off uh, just this really nice glow when it's lit up. Totally, you know, because that, that other thicker material will kind of block the light. We like that it's seen through, you yes, know, yes, it adds a little, a little extra dimension. Yeah. So I did my first blob. It my kind of looks like blob. a jelly bean. It kind of does. Let's see. You know, yeah, and if you don't have tissue paper, you can even just draw all of oh, yeah, this. Or you color it in with a marker. Color it with a marker. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Let's very cute, see. very so cute. Going around, turning my tissue paper. If you have worked with tissue paper before, you know it can be really delicate and can rip. So you do want to just kind of like take your time with it. Yeah, but the best thing is that it's inexpensive and it comes with a lot. Yes. You know, we're only using a little bit for this. Michaels um, has a pack that we love. We kind of yes, they're all like these kind of like muted fun colors yeah. that are kind of uh, bright but not so bright. Um, they also, I think, they carry a, a little thicker tissue paper, which is called kite paper which is a little thicker and it gives you a, a little more. Um, that really has like a, a, a vibrant color, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do like the tissue paper. I feel like it's so versatile. Now, um, I think, I'm trying to think of different holidays and different occasions we would use this too. You kind of said, what was it, your like famous dish, Dennis? Oh yeah, like your food. food. Your famous food dish. But I think this would be so fun for Halloween, Christmas, different seasons, you really could just add um add different um vellum pieces for every season like how fun would that be something for spring something for summer something for the autumn you know what are you forgetting winter winter there we go <laughs> well i was gonna say living in or a like small birthdays you can yeah. write like a little birthday message oh yeah like when people come over and stuff like that no like for for your loved ones your family right, like happy yeah. birthday andrew whatever so they wake up to a little surprise that'd be very that'd nice. be fun all right, so I have my three blobs cut out. And then to put these on the vellum paper, I'm just going to... Dee said she loves those colors. Yes, oh, it comes in a you. large pack from Michael's. Um, actually, I think this we found right when we walked in. Yeah, it's they like have a, a little party, uh, party section. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take my top piece of vellum and I'm going to strategically look at it because I kind of want the blobs to be in the right place. Oh yeah, you want to put that? Sure, yeah, just so you see it better. Totally. So I just kind of want to make sure it's in the right spot. I'm like, oh, okay, that looks pretty good if I had a blob here and a blob here. And let's just say I'm going to put one here. Now to attach we it- We probably should have thought of a different word to call these. Uh, than blob. Than blobs. But no, you know, I think everybody are. gets it. You know, yes. crafters have their own language. What we, what, what could I say? Like uh, your shapes, a geometric or well, not geometric? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to be using a jelly bean. A jelly bean. <laughs> I'm going to be using a glue gun for this. You could totally use a uh, craft glue or anything like that. But what I do like about using a glue uh, stick with tissue paper and the vellum is that you won't see any streaking when it's lit up, and uh, it's really easy to lay down the uh, actual tissue paper it's not going to rip when you uh, lay it down. Because you know, if you've ever, we've worked with like um, craft glue in the past, you lay it down and then you got to kind of like right, fix it right. up yes, and stuff like too, that. Uh, thick, you know? Yes, that's it, it's too thick. So I'm going to just place it right here and I'm going to press it down. And now with these edges, I'm just going to make sure that I have them glued down as well. And again, you won't see this glue stick. So if you go over the part uh, that the tissue paper won't be on, that's okay. You really won't see that. Go. Looking good, looking thank good. Thank you, thank you. And then I'm going to add my second blob. And I'm going to just overlap it a little bit. I just think that will be interesting. It will add a new color to it as well. Yes. And again, he's doing this on the rough and ready um, shrinky dink vellum paper. Yes. All right. So this is very collage like, you know? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, so if you're a scrapbooker, uh, is that yeah. what you call a scrapbooker? I, scrap, uh, into scrap a scrapbooker? Into scrapbooking. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, like you're probably very familiar with layering and uh, glue. Definitely. 
And like Dennis said before, it would be really great. I know Michaels has a great selection of sticker letters, stuff like that. You really yes, could if just you want to write a out message like a little message, it. happy summer, totally. summer vibes, you know, just put it right on there in the front. I think that would be really, really cute. Yes. All right, now I'm going to add my last little. And we're going to be uh, teaching uh, three more classes with Fiskars and Michaels yep. uh, throughout the year. We have a, a July craft coming, which is going to be great for the kids. We're going yeah. to make some fun little, uh, you know, kid-friendly fireworks and uh, star wands. Um, All made with paper, not, not no, yeah, no really explosives easy. here. <laughs> no, <laughs> only our personalities and energy. Hey, yes. yes, I like that. All right, now here we have it done, and you can kind of see it. Like, Very cute. That is. Very now, cute. if it does wrinkle a little bit, not to worry. When it is in the light, you really won't see that. Plus, I kind of like that texture. You know, it's all about those added textures. Yes. All right. So to make this three-dimensional, what we're going to be using are two extra pieces of math board. These are the same size as the pieces we used for the frame. And we're actually just going to glue it. that right on. You want me to right on. Oh, my gosh. I would okay. love that. So you can just add a strip of, or like a line. Yeah, so again, this white sides. here is just so that you can all see. Yes. Um, so you just want me to. Totally. Concentrating very hard. I don't can tell, ruin, I did it, you know. Don't want to ruin your hard work please here. Please don't. So I'm just going to press this down right on the glue and stand it up just like that. I'm just going to hold it with a little bit of pressure until it's nice and glued. Hey, that's it. That's it. Wow. One and right. done. One, one and done. 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 Next one. And actually, we have been using this um, bright vellum paper underneath just so you can see it. But it is a good tip to um, have a nice bright piece of vellum paper behind it or even just a piece of computer paper just because then you will not see the lighting behind um, your artwork. Now, if you don't want to use computer paper or that, you could actually just uh, bulk it up with just a few extra pieces of the rough and ready, just so it becomes um, a little more opaque. Yes, but I think we glued this to the. Oh my there god! You glued it to the thing. All right. So then, Dennis, what you need to do is add another uh, just two lines of glue right on top of those pieces, and then we're just going to sandwich it right on top. Wow. Now, I think the fun thing about this because oh, wait, wait, on the top here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. Because then we'll just put it right on top. All right. So I think the fun part about this too is that we, since we've made our light box so deep, you really could do like four different um, panels like this and make it really um, feel uh, like, like yeah, a lot dimensional, of depth. Like yeah. a forced perspective type of, totally. uh, a lot of storytelling there. I see like a lot of landscape uh, scenes and oh, artwork. Yeah. I think something like that would work really well. So you just want to line it up and then press it down and just sit it on top there. Yep. So cute. I mean, come on. And what I also like about this too is that when you put it in the light box, since it does have this piece, it actually will stand on its own, just like that. Now what you can do is if you want it to be a little more permanent, you could just use a little bit of double-sided tape stick it right to here, just so yeah, it doesn't or like, like fall blue dots. Totally. And I'm actually gonna take my own advice and I'm gonna cut this down with the Amplify scissors, just so that I can put it behind here and you won't see the lighting coming through. Very so cute, very cute. All right, and I'm just gonna stick it right behind here. Yes. All right, so should we show the lighting? Yes, let's show right. the lighting. We're almost there. So, and again, we have our top piece here. You know, again, we want to make ours uh, interchangeable so that we're able to change it out. Yep. Um, but if you want to, you can put this all in and then, you know, glue on the top there. This way it will stay, uh, you know, permanent. Absolutely. But again, we want to change it out. We want the ability, you know, we, we, we're constantly redecorating, shifting 
moving things around, decorating yeah. for the holidays. Uh, living in a living in a one bedroom apartment, you really kind of you get you get a little stir crazy. So having something that you can switch out all the time, I think does really help. Yes. All right. So for the lighting, we're actually going to be using these battery operated LED lights, and I actually just kept it on in the packaging that it came with, just because I liked the fact that it uh, was all compact, and that it also, if I place it right in the light box, it'll also stand up. And if, if I took it out, I was afraid that it would kind of all sag to the bottom, which I'm sure would look fine. But I just thought, you know what, this is even easier. Now we found these at Michael's in, they have a whole section with different lighting. I do recommend finding something with LED because this is made out of paper and you do want to have, you know, you want to make sure it's safety first. Yeah. But the great thing about this too, is that they have remotes that they sell as well. So you could have this on a remote control and um, really just keep it really easy for yourself so you don't have to reach in every time. Dennis, I see is grabbing some yeah, double-sided tape, double -sided tape just, just so we can kind of... Yes, now Holly, if there are any questions out there, um, let us know. We do have one question. They're asking about, um, I think the vellum paper and they asked if you have to shrink it before and after. I don't think you have to shrink this paper, That's right? a great question. You know, do not shrink it. Yeah, you don't want to shrink this paper because it will actually shrink down to a third of its size. So it'll shrink down uh, quite a lot and it will get thicker. Um, so don't shrink it down. It, yeah, that's what this, we love about this paper because there, there are so many different um, uses for it. So we will, we do a lot of shrinky things here because you're never too old. But um, <laughs> also we use them actually more for other things. All right. Thank yeah, you. Dennis. So I just added a piece of double sided tape right on the top there, just so it all stays together and you can see it. Yep. And then we're just going to put our lid right here. And I mean, come on. And that's it. That's so cute. Now, I, I'm not sure how well it looks in the zoom on the front view, but it really is really bright in here. I know it, it's not looking as bright. Yeah, we have all our ring lights. I know. And we need a lot lighting. of ring lights to make us look nice. <laughs> yes, you know. presentable. <laughs> Uh, but it's so cute. I love it because it's going to bring in those summer vibes. We don't have an outdoor space here, so we no. like to go as tropical as we can for the summer. Absolutely. Uh, but it's so cute. I think it's really cute. We do have another question. Hey, Everyone sure. is really liking the, I can't say it either, Monastera plant, and they want to know where you guys got that. Is there a place or did you use the handy dandy Google? Yeah, we used handy dandy Google. We just did a free clip art, essentially, yeah. like clip art from back in the day. You just Google like a free image of Monstera plants. Yes, leaves, palm leaves, palm totally. trees, beach scene, um, you know, and you go to the image section and you just see what works. Yeah, we printed I like to it just out. size it and then print it out. Yeah. yeah. And then we just trace it. I mean, if you are good with a uh, freehand artwork, totally. just draw How your own. Why not? Yes, yeah, so a real nice cute. way to display all that art. Yes, I love it. We actually have two now, I think. We do have two now. We should, should have done one with our cat, like a cat portrait. Oh my, well, that will have to be next. Yes. There we go. Any other questions out there? I feel like we hit a lot of points. So if you do have any questions yes. and you don't have, uh, and you don't know them yet, please feel free to ask us. Uh, through uh, DM on Instagram. Yes, or... we're the Crafty Lumberjacks all over. Uh, totally. Make sure you tag us, uh, Crafty Lumberjacks, Fiskars, Michaels. The hashtag is make it with Michaels. Yes, we want to know if you make one of these because we would love to see it. I know Fiskars and Michaels would love to see it as well. Um, I had a lot of fun today. Yes, this helped me get through my, my gloomy mood. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing on time, Holly? You are doing great. A couple more questions and comments are coming in. Sure. Lots of just positive feedback. They love your energy. Oh, thank you, everybody. This is so great that Michael's and Fiskars gives us this opportunity to hang out um, and be creative. Because uh, if not, it's literally just us talking to each other. And, and boy, we're tired of it. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the couple questions are, um, how are you taping on the lid? Are you attaching that? Or do you just set it there? Or do you, you know, how do you attach that? You know, we just set it right on because we're not going to be touching it too much. We're not too worried about that. Um, it is out of the cat's reach, so he will not be <laughs> batting it. But we just set it right on. It actually works really well. We actually made this one or this one about um, 
a month ago just to see how it would hold up and stuff like that. And just setting it on totally works. But if you do want to tack it down, like if you're looking for something more permanent, I would just say put a little bit of glue along the edges and just press it down. Yes. Oh, I like this one. There is a request for the next class for you guys to sing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. Like, uh, baby, you're a firework, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll uh, do some choreography as well. Okay. Well, look, look at him. He's already directing you. Great. We will have a whole 4th of July special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, it looks like that is all of the questions. Just a lot of thank you. So that's it for now. All right, all right. well, thank you everybody yes. for uh, watching today. Uh, make sure again, you tag us. Uh, don't do. be shy to share your projects or ask us questions. We'll leave the link um, in the chat there. It will be on our blog. And also this video will be forever on YouTube. So you can yes. always revisit it. Uh, and we had a great time. Yeah, thank you so much for hanging out today.